Welcome back to another episode of Sour Candy. I'm Supath. And my name's Ang. And we have a very special guest with us today who goes by the name of Lennox Kwan. Lennox, welcome and thank you so much for being in this episode of Sour Candy. Yo, thank you, uh, you two, for first inviting me me to this podcast i'm really deeply honored man like as two friends especially super i've known for ages very very happy man i'm very deeply very very happy thank you um for those who don't know you or who is listening to you for the first time or watching you for the first time would you like would you mind introducing yourself to them uh sure um so when people normally ask me that question i normally like to define it in like three words actually not define but give three words to tell who I am and that is family energetic because I believe in energy and I I also love creating so I'll call myself a creative as well but back to the family point I I treat family and friends as the same so I think family and friends could be a word to summarize both of them and um, I'm also a founder and of a record label I also call it a platform Dimson Records I started two years ago and uh, alongside with that I, I'm also a full-time accountant so my life at the moment time-wise if there's a, a pie it'll be balancing between my creative work my passion project and my full-time job um, accountancy nice okay so when did you just dis- when did you start dim sum project I started the Dim Sum project uh, two years ago uh, in January 2018. Um, it was, I remember 25th of January to be precise. Uh, it was actually noted down in my diary. <laughs> uh, so that's when, we, I, I, and I think it's good because when we celebrate that birthday, at least I know that date that we celebrate it. So it was two years when I was actually in the post of doing my master's degree. And it literally was, came from the idea of just that like, I wanted to execute something. And like, like how you two, executed sour candy it was an idea yeah. and literally just put it out to the universe so it was two years ago so i've been working on two years now um yeah it's been a very fun journey and a very a journey that I, I i grew myself with and yeah it's just been very enjoyable so so how long did it take you from the moment you said oh like this this you know you came up with the idea and you said to yourself oh it, it this idea can go somewhere to the moment where you actually launched the project which is called Dim Sum Records now? Um, so I think that really reflects with, of course, first my culture, mm-hmm. but Dim Sum Records is the idea I actually had, literally sitting on, at a restaurant with my uncle, literally observing everything in the restaurant. I just said to my uncle, wouldn't it be so cool to like have someone like DJing and then also having like Chinese food as well, not a specific Dim Sum, but it was just Chinese food. And then that idea sort of grew. I got my little sketch pad, like little sketch pad I used to have at home. He drew out the idea, <laughs> went back to my uncle the, the other week and said, you know what, this, this could work here. But I was, like, I was like 15, I remember like, no, not 15, like to be correct, like more like 17. And literally it took me three years to really like, didn't really think about it. My mindset, my, 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 my whole growth wasn't really towards creating something. It was like enjoying myself at uni and then that that day, I thought, you know what, New Year, New Me, like how it goes, and like, I decided something. If you get me, so 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 in that three years, did you ever think, um, like, oh, is this this isn't gonna work? This isn't practical, or this idea isn't gonna be, you know, isn't gonna be valuable or worth my time? Did you ever think that? And if you did, how did you overcome that sort of uh, self doubt? The thing is, with me, I always love creating as a hobby. Always, like, from a young age, I was, like, uh, one little story as a kid was I used to, um, I used to, like, watch Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. I wanted to have a, tri- I-, I wanted to own a chocolate factory. Uh, so I got, ch- I bought chocolates from news agents and then ra- used my, stole my sister's origami paper mm-hmm. and then wrapped it up thinking I was cho- a chocolate owner. But I think these little things, it was just a, a playful thing. It was, and then, Dim Sum Records, when I first started doing some records, there was no belief at all. It was literally a passion project. It wasn't about believing that I was going to take it anywhere else. It was like I'm, I'm, I just want to create something on the side, as it wasn't it wasn't the focus because my focus was doing my master's degree. 
And so there was no belief at all. So until now, that's why I said it, literally the brand grew with me because I was able to learn things that and look at possibilities that I never really thought of literally even imagining. So it, it has been, yeah, it started from a place of no belief, if you know I me. Mean. I, 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 to be honest, like to be honest with myself, I, I haven't been always been a confident person now. I, I'm still not the confident person, but I, 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 as, as I want it to want to be, but it's a, it's a learning process, if you know I me. Mean. I, I, I love, like, I just love creating, I'm obsessed with it, so. Yeah, but for going back to the question, I didn't really have any belief. Mm. Okay. So how do you manage to, like, you know, um, balance time between being a full-time accountant and working on a project on the side? Like, how, how do you go about doing that? To be honest with you, like, it is, it is a complete learning process. I think it's like when you realise you can't manage your time well, then you think, oh, okay, I need to, I need to improve on that area. So you find different methods... And then of course, the good thing about having a full-time job is you know that between nine to five, that time is for work. So as long as I put my full, t- full energies into that full-time job, anything else after, like I, can, I, I know the times that I can work on it. But the thing is, I have exams as well. So that makes it even harder. But at the same time, because it's harder, I was, each time I was working on Dimson Records, I was actually able to be more focused on it. So... Of course, there, there, there is sacrifices. There's a lot of sacrifices when doing a passion project, uh, which is going a bit more serious than you ever think of. But I think it's also a fun sort of time to try and error the different sort of time, um, sort of how you manage your time. So, like, of course, you two have full-time jobs as well. Like, is there any techniques you can share mm-hmm. with me? Well, I, well, I was going to ask you how does one you know, balance a full-time job and a passion project after the job. But, like, personally, because you asked me, I think with Sour Candy and my full-time job, I, you know, you... The thing with full-time job is even if it's 95, it's not actually 95. It's actually the, the, from the moment you wake up, getting ready to commute, do 95 and then commute back. And then, so that's not just 95, that's more than, you know, 11, 12 hours of your day. And then after you come back and that's you, you're tired and then sometimes you don't have time and sometimes you just can't be asked. And with Sour Candy, I've been, you know, blessed with the people around me like him, Bishim, Sujan, who, who do the same amount of work as I do. Yeah. And if, if, if I'm feeling down um, in a sense that I can't do my workload or the work that I've been um, assigned, they take over and then... It, it sort of like goes back and forth and then we have deadlines um but at the end of the day i think if you're having fun that overshadows any sort of like hardships yeah i think for me personally yeah exactly uh because the thing with me at the moment is i do basically is me running dim sum records at the moment so but i was able to be blessed because i, I think when you do something myself i was able to i have to be out there networking with different people i i love networking with people because like literally, I just love finding about like other people. Like literally, finding out about what they're good at, what their interests are, and through doing what I'm doing right now, I was able to like meet this illustrator from Indonesia, who's able to help me with the art. And from that, I was able to, of course, I think that is for me able to balance my time well because I don't have to think about the illustration. I was able to, of course, at the pace I want to do it, but I was able to like get that sick illustration for people to see. And from the other side of the world, we've got all the tools now nowadays to really like balance our time by outsourcing. Yeah, I've always loved your illustrations for Dim Sum Records. I've always, I've always wondered who did it. Like they're so, so sick. Oh, like, thank the you posters. so much. Yeah, yeah, they're really, really good. I guess mostly it's about like you know finding the right people for your team. Yes. Um, oh, but like those people always always ask me like, oh, do you have a team? And the thing is, I have in the process has found like different people for the team but of course those people went to do their own projects and I'm completely happy that they have done their own projects because that's actually what I want I want people who like I don't want people to I don't want people I don't want to like attach people to the brand itself if people if people are passionate enough they will stay but I always encourage people to start their own thing because I, I realise for a lot of people that's when they're the, the best out of it I mean so Hence, that's I like to connect with different individuals who help me for a while, and then 
then I, then I'll encourage them to find their own projects and literally they're doing really well themselves now as well. So Lennox, so, um, tell me about the creative process behind, you know, um, the kind of uh, inspirations that you um, have when it comes to creating projects for Dimson Records. Uh, yes, uh, actually before I say that, I'd like to actually state the purpose of myself and the purpose of Dimson Records is sort of really aligned because I'm very passionate about connecting cultures, connecting people and bringing out the best of each other. I think one of my whys is to, one of my purposes is to uh, create a positive impact while my creative work. And I think Dim Sum itself, I don't know if you had it before. Have you had Dim Sum before? I love yeah. Dim Sum. Yeah. <laughs> Dim Sum is very similar to dumplings that we have. Wait, Dim Sum? It's like Momos, yeah. Yeah, 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 Momos, yeah, yeah, yeah. Momos, yeah. yeah. I, I, tr- I tried Momos before <laughs> yeah. as well. Uh, man, I love Momos. So do, do you yeah. love Dim Sum or Momos more? I like them in different, like, if, like, when I, let's say I link up with Super, I'll be like, Momo's all the way. Choose your answer wisely. Choose your answer wisely. But, uh, yeah, uh, Dim Sum uh, itself is something I had with my parents, my family, like, it's a family gathering of people just eating dumplings, people just having a good time, having good different conversations, if you get me. Over the last 25 years, I was in, like, in existence in this world. Dim sum was a like sometimes a weekly thing, uh, but then that sort of inspired me because I just realised. I think one thing I learned with dim sum is how much I love my culture, and through that, I was able to take loads of things out from my culture to like, all the different artworks and different things we release via the label. So we release like music itself. We release long sort of music, which is a mix series, which is like a DJ mix, which is like one hour over one hour long. So the songs wise is like normally the, the songs are like three minutes. Uh, the the songs we release for DJs to actually play, and I think the artwork as well is what always is the is the part where I actually struggle the most because I really have to delve into myself and really think actually. How can I sort of, of course, you want to make it yourself as well. Like, I have, to, I have to choose really wisely, okay, what is something I can sort of relate to this EP or relate to this mix series that I can put out to people? And for always, I always think, okay, I really like that sauce bottle. I saw it in my mum's, um, I saw it in, in my mum's kitchen or I went to a supermarket and had this Chinese snack. And I think my sort of creative process is, being able to relate that China, sort of Chinese culture onto like that piece of artwork and make it look good, if you get me. So I can get I get inspired so easily, and I always love going to super Chinese supermarkets itself. And just going around the aisles, not buying anything, and just thinking, you know what? I really like that. I really like the. I think Asian packaging is literally out of the world. Like the colours they had put in, <laughs> and that really that really really inspires me into like the different artworks we have at the moment. So it always. Uh, like sometimes when I get into a creative block, right, which is like I actually I actually like creative blocks because it's all if I, if I flip it on another coin, it's a time for me to get inspired again. So I, I like whenever I'm, I'm on a creative block, I just go on Pinterest for five hours and just look at different sorts of arts and just pick that out. So but then then I like certain wordings like literally it all comes together. I think it's very really hard for me to use words to explain my creative process, but it's just literally. In put simply, it's about relating to my culture, relating to myself, and literally just making it very like vibrant and energetic. Yeah, I I love what you said about the creative blog. I think so many people can relate, um, especially designers. Like I think it it it's so relevant, and I think that happens to literally every single person who's it's, trying to create something that's not been done before. It's quite a mad place. Yeah. Like when it's, like, it's, I think it's a sort of similar place of like the non-belief place. If you get me, yeah. when when you are in the creative block, you find wow, like what do I do? If you get me, you feel very lost. But I think that there's such a beautiful thing about being lost, because without being lost, you you won't be found again. So I actually love being lost. And sometimes things you think things might be going the other side, but everything's temporary nowadays. And I always feel like. I'm not always going to be in this creative block. I just need to get myself out of it. And once you find a way to get out, your, get out, get out of that creative block, you'll be zooming again and let your ideas exactly. sort of flow via me. So, yeah, I love it. I really, really love it. That's the main you, thing. Yeah. Uh, would you say that um, you take inspiration from other cultures other than the culture that you grew up in? 
when it comes to dim sum records and just anything that you do in life? I love traveling. Like I think the best times I ever had is traveling to different cultures. I I love finding about different cultures of it. Like just going to like a country with an open mind and just saying, oh, this is how they. Because when you go on holiday and we like and when you like lived there, it's two different mindsets. And you know, holiday mindset, yeah. you're just enjoying yourself, but always trying to find myself to immerse myself into that sort of culture, like eating, doing things that the locals do or going to restaurants that the locals do. Because when you go and searching up, preparing for your holiday, you normally go, oh, uh, you go to the, the trip advisor and they give you the top 10, um, top 10 places to go. But I want to go to like the, the places that... <laughs> the, like, top <laughs> yeah, really the top worst. Yeah, the top worst. Like, the, the things that the locals do. I think that's when you're really immersed to it. And I think with Dim Sum itself, I like to... In terms of talent, I want to I want to bring the best out of different talents. But I think the why was to connect the East and the the West together, and not only just connecting it, like having a good, good good conversation. It was really about creating an environment where people can communicate and collaborate in the future. And once you have that sort of environment to be creative and work together, I find that 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 is such a beautiful thing. And going back to different cultures, I, I always love to. At the moment, we've got a release coming out with loads of Swedish. UK garage producers and I find that so beautiful because there are people you think you, you probably think there are people outside there don't even produce this sort of music but they're actually doing it and exper- ex- like experimenting it and I just love that and I love I feel a massive honour to even put their music out so I'm very and then they tell me a bit, a bit of their culture and I tell them a bit, a bit of mine and it's like literally a bit of a laugh as well <laughs> so yeah I, I, re- I do really I do really like to explore different cultures. I guess different cultures have like different perspective when it comes to music and bringing everything together. Like, you know, someone who's been having like a completely different perspective and just thinking about it in one way and you have a different perspective and you have like your own way of doing things and you come together and you produce something that's very unique. Yeah, exactly. That's when you actually, you know, try get to get over that little block that you said you have as well. Exactly. Right? I think like, do you know, I, I don't know if you like experience it, but like when you talk to someone who's is born like in a different sort of environment to you, and then I, I just like the whole. I just always observe that sort of sharing experience where oh, I did that when I was younger, or I ate oh, that. Oh yeah. I yeah, ate that. Yeah. I ate that snack when I was younger. Like and then, especially with like cartoons or things you've watched, like especially TV shows. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. We all watched the same. We all watched, like, I don't know, Tom and Jerry Popeye. We all watched it growing up, no matter where you were born. Yeah, exactly. And I find that such a, like, that shakes. And sometimes when you feel, I think when you find something in common, when you can relate with yeah. another person, before you say, oh, oh, yeah, I did that as well, you always feel shit. Like, no, like, I always feel like, yo, we're actually on the same boat, you know? Like, even when we're like different cultures or different. We have similarities as well, and also we have differences where we can actually explore together. If you hear me, like I can explore more about your family, and you want to find out about more, more about my family and your way of learning and growing. I just I just love all that. If you hear me, so I was able to use Dim Sum itself as a tool to actually find out more about people. Cool. So, I I really found it fascinating of uh, where what Dim Sum is all about and. The really why of dim sum, right? Yeah. So when where do you think dim sum is gonna end? Is there gonna be a point where you've done all that you could, and all that you aimed for with dim sum? Like how how does it play out when you've reached that point? I think in my mind, I want to create something timeless. I think I don't. I think going to that point, and it's not just like creating a timeless passion project. It is to I think with it, it, I think with when I created dim sum until uh, at, at this point now i think it's bigger than the music it's all about i think that's something that can last long is the is the fact that it can cre- create a positive cultural change and music itself of course is the center of it is is a major tool to bring people about and so is food both these two itself but dim sum is the food the music uh, the the music, whatever we release, is the is the music itself. Those two fused together, in my belief, I think we can hopefully, hopefully create a positive cultural change and move it forward. And 
I hope the thing with going back to the point of timeless is just I want something that maybe my my kids can take over in a in a few in and create an even bigger positive change. I was just there to start it, and that's why I, I always want to bring cultures together and find different ways to do so. And it's not just just saying oh, racism is bad, putting in people. With it. I, I want to introduce things to people by what we do and show to give that sort of muscle to. Like look into different cultures, you get me, and not just in the faces saying, "Oh, don't, don't, don't be racist," because I've re- I realise there's always a there's a, there was an alternative way to bring cultures together, and that's what I want to do. Like I don't think I don't think there's end ending point. I think uh, there, there's so many things. I've got actually a list of things I want to do with them. Some it's not really stringent at the moment, but there's, there's so many things I want to tick off, and yeah, it just. I don't think I I I I I would want someone to carry on and carry on and make it a very very long brand that will outlive myself. If you get me. Where would you get this inspiration from? Like, when did you decide that you know you wanted to make this movement where you're, you know, making a positive change in the world and trying to showcase something something positive? I think it really relates to my upbringing. Because I was, I'm, I'm a British-born Chinese. Um, I was born in this country. Uh, my parents are Chinese, and I was, yeah, I was, I was born in the UK. So I was able to immerse myself. I was born in two cultures: the Western side of the culture, and I was also born with my family side, the tradition side. So I always, I think, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't say it's completely relatable, but I was able to discover that two of my and have that mindset already to to be able to be open about things. And I had a year in Hong Kong. I think that was the, I think that was building up to when I was forming Dim Sum, literally just before my master's degree, I found loads of DJs in Hong Kong who are talented. And I found that literally everyone in the West where I was from, they didn't really know about these creatives, but they're, they're so talented. So I was very just inspired just by why not just like I want I want people in the West to know about these names, if you know I mean? and also I want people to like in the East to know more about my the, the up and coming selectors or the as DJs and producers and illustrators. And it was just the fact that from a creative point of view, I just want to create this environment mm. where people were freely creating and freely having a good time and just like creating a positive change via their creative work. So yeah. Wow, yeah. that that's pretty, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, um, another thing I want to ask is that this didn't come, um, this didn't really didn't come from when I first started completely. It was building up to it. It was uh, as I grew the brand up, I realized it was all bigger than the music. I realized I love putting out music. That's one of my main things to do. That's one of the main things I spent my time to. But it was just putting smiles on people's faces. Like at the parties, I literally was standing at the booth. I was just seeing people having a good time. And I didn't realise the positive impact that people can create just by making people dance and having, like, there's different ways for me to, like, create a positive impact. Like, they can have a bad day and they can dance it off to good music. And that's sort of the impact that I, I hope to bring. Have you ever thought about producing music yourself? Or... Um... I have. Actually, my uncle taught me how to DJ. The uncle I actually had the conversation with, he, he was a garage DJ at university. And he actually taught me how to DJ, not really stringently, like, he was just, like, very, like... I had I had a little uh, mix track pro. It was a little DJ deck. It wasn't even a DJ deck, but he taught me how to beat match. But then, of course, things actually... I wouldn't say excuse, excuse but... Low, of course, at uni came in the way. I was always, like, DJing in, like, parties and house parties and but I never really thought of like deeply uh, like producing or DJing and definitely not I wouldn't say definitely not not now but with the time I have I'd rather put my all my eggs in creating a credible platform for my friends to so I can put their music out because if if I produce and DJ I'm only putting one person out but I've got like let's, let's say 20 talented friends or I create a credible pr- platform where I can put 20, 20, 20 uh, on my talented friends. So I would say to myself, to me, that is a bigger impact. 
So at the moment, with time wise, I don't think I have the time to really like. If I put my time to DJ and producing, that means less time on creating this credible platform. I think. So what's it, um, Tupov? And, and what, <laughs> uh, uh, just, uh, what, what's it like growing up? Um, it, do you grow up in the UK most of your life? As um, in Nepalese? I did. Um, um, yeah. Well, since the, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since the age of the, <laughs> since the, <laughs> since the age of um, eleven, I grew up in um, London. Yeah. Well, I've been here. I've lived here more than I've lived in Nepal. So. Oh, nice. So, so like, do you know when you? Well, do you have any any early memories of like when you were in Nepal and then you sort of brought that sort of like interesting sort of culture into the UK that you still have today? To I'll, bring in, I'll, no, I'll, no, I'll I'll say <laughs> food festivals. Yeah. Well, not food festivals, but food separately and then festivals. What's a, what's a favorite food in no, Nepalese? I want to. Is that momos? Is that momos? Oh. Uh, suguti. Suguti. What's it's, that? It, it's like. It's, it's like dried meat. Yeah. Dried meat. It's like yeah. beef jerky or... Kind yeah. of like beef jerky. It's not beef, yeah. is it? It's not beef jerky. Uh, no, it's not beef, but it's kind of like beef jerky. But you can like you eat it like beef jerky, right? Like no, you, 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 you cook it. You oh, cook you cook it. Okay, you cook cool, it. Cool, yeah, cool. it's kind of like a beef jerky, but you cook it, I think. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not do, do you have that as well? Do you have do you, do you have do you eat that? Is that your one of the I'm, I'm as well? vegetarian. Are you vegetarian? Yeah. <laughs> vegetarian yeah. for two hours. I I, 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 I have like I do I do want to be a vegetarian at one point. If you mean, but yeah, um, I don't think I'm ready. Yet. Yeah, me. I just started. Uh, in why, why do you want to be a vegetarian? Actually, I would rather be a pescatarian. You get me? Because I, okay. I love eating fish a lot uh, more than any other meat. I, I guess so. in your culture, you eat a lot of fish, no? We, my mum loves uh, to eat cooker fish, salmon, lemon sole, and I actually my favourite fish is probably lemon sole. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you had lemon sole before? No. Like literally, uh, I don't know. It's quite expensive, but it's like one of a. Uh, I, I would say a treat. You get me? So, lemon sole is, is like massive fish. With, it smells like nice, like lemons, like white sort of fish. I just love it, and with rice, and then of course salmon is a weekly thing now. So. I love salmon as well. Omega three, omega three wow. gang, <laughs> omega three, uh, omega three gang. Like one of my um, my mom says, like good for your studies. So, so, so would that be your favorite food? I uh, no, oh. I would actually going back to the point of would I be a uh, biscuit? Yeah. I I love my roast pork and roast duck, <laughs> like, which is char. Do you know in Chinese it's pronounced char siu, which is a. Uh, Literally, like one of the, one of my favorites. But, but you you said you would love to be a vegetarian, but you're just not ready yet. So why, what what, what was making you not ready? <laughs> I think it's not like giving up. I would say giving up my favorite my favorite sort of food. So so you think there will be eventually a time where you think uh, like maybe it's time to for me to be vegetarian. Um, yes, I think I do. More so a more vegetarian diet, if you get me. So I think it's a balance, if you get me. So yeah. it's less less meat and more vegeta more vegetables. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I just think I personally think that could be a like better better sort of way in terms of my diet. But of course, it's not a sudden change. I want to like if I was going to go to that direction, I'll be like changing it like slowly. So yeah, it's definitely I want to something I want to try first and then. So if I like it, I slowly graduate. I think you should definitely try it. Yeah. You definitely try it. Because for me, I just started in January as well. Um, just I haven't had any meat after that. Um, and I feel a lot better. This, feel a lot there's better? not a video about, you know, trying to make other people vegetarian and as well. But like for me, I genuinely feel a lot better. I feel like I have more energy as well. Uh, before that, I would just eat meat for like every yeah. single day, every single day. And... It's it's a good change. It's a good fist fight, man. It's a good change. <laughs> uh, I, 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 back to Momos. I think I, I personally think Nepalese. Um, <laughs> I'm craving some. I'm, I'm, craving, I'm, craving, I'm craving some Momos right now. Yeah. I find Nepalese and Chinese cultures like it's quite a similar food. Um, I guess it's because of the fact that Nepal is in between India and China. Okay. So yeah. we do yeah. get influenced a lot in terms of food and culturally as well from China and India. So maybe it's because of that. I guess I guess Came we down. get the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. No, I, like I love that. Indian food. I love Chinese food, and because we're so because we've been having both of them for like since we were a kid. Yeah. Um, and it, it, yeah, as I said, best of both worlds. Would well, you say Momo is a food that you actually grew up with, like as a kid to now? Like you always had it from like 
Family. Yeah, I, I think most Nepalese people would say that momo is their favorite dish. <laughs> well, what does momo actually stand like? What, what, why is it called momo? Is, there, is it just called momos or is it? I think that's just the name. Yeah, yeah. that's just the name. Oh, nice. Oh. But I guess the big difference when it comes to, I guess, dim sums and dumplings and stuff like that, and momos is the fact that the seasoning that we put in, and for us, I don't know how to say it. sauce. What's that? It's the sauce. Yeah, the sauce makes it. It's the sauce, man. Yeah. Is there a sauce? That that makes a whole lot of difference. Is that, for, do you have a little dumplings. secret recipe with the sauce? Nah, not really, but the way we make sauce, <laughs> saucy. <Yeah. laughs> saucy. Yeah. Is, it, is it chili or is it? Nah, it just... Ket- ketchup, how long does that last? <laughs> exactly. Sauce. Yeah, but yeah, sauce. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I, 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 Infinite. I, actually, I went, when I was in Hong Kong, I actually went to... Uh, I was like going to different networking events. One of them was actually at a Nepalese restaurant in... Uh, like in... Uh, TST, which is Tim Tao Cho, is like literally loads of expats because I was a, I, I was a, literally an expat myself. So like, there was an expat meeting and everyone. That's, I think that's my first encounter with Momos. Yeah, I enjoyed it so much. So so Did when you... I met Supath at uni, you know, I thought, and he told me about Momos. I thought, oh my god. Here we are. Yeah, exactly. hey, here we are. Shit. Here we go again. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Who'd have exactly, thought? exactly, exactly, exactly. Uh, it's good, 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 really good stuff, man. Have you tried anything else in there, please? Any food? Um, I don't. I, I don't know if it's Nepalese, but I think it's more Malaysian. Like roti can I have it? Is that is that roti? roti? Yeah, roti is that Nepalese? Ro- roti is Nepalese. Well, yeah, is that it's Nepalese? a little bit Indian and Nepalese roti. Yeah, oh, well, yeah, I yeah. love roti. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't think it's Malaysian <laughs> at all. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. 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 no, no. Um. <laughs> Good stuff, man. Yeah, I love. Uh, I just love food overall. I think that really influences in terms of like that. I think food itself is such a. It connects people together. If you get me, like yeah. when I'm, I always have it on observe people at my dinner table, and everyone's just enjoying the food, like and just having a good conversation. And I think that really relates to the music itself. When you're on the dance floor itself, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter where you come from. Everyone's just having a good time. And I think, I think if we if, if if everyone can sort of put that positive change via their own passions, I I I, I, I personally think I really I really big them up. Maybe me. Yeah, yeah. So um, we're gonna ask you a couple of questions so that we can get to know more about you. Yeah. Um, starting with five material things that you can't live without. Ooh, five minutes. The thing with me is that I, 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 would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would like to say I'm not really a material person as well, but I think there's five basics. I'll definitely have a family photo, you know what I mean? I love to always have a family photo with That's me. That's really interesting. That I can actually look at. So when times are good and times are whatever hard, I would look at the photo and I know that in that photo there's four other, the bit my biggest supporters. Yeah, yeah. Always... The- been supporting me from day one. So I'd love to have a family photo. Definitely headphones, 100%. I love listening to my music so much. I think, I, I, I don't know, I feel like without my headphones, I feel like, not lost, but I always want to have a good pair of headphones listening to some music. Like, I think it really helps with the mood I'm in that day. I mean, I'm feeling, listening to like all sorts of music, but I think, and also, I, w- I used my headphones to create content myself. So headphones are very important. Um, so you listen to different music during different moods. Yeah, I, I, isn't isn't that what everyone does? No, nah, but, but, but listen to one. I don't know. Like, no, I, I know some people. I know some. I, I know some people who listen to like one kind of music, and I was like that to be honest. Because when I was infused with a lot of like maybe if I was in love with one sort of genre, that's the only thing I listened to. But as, as actually when I started doing Dim Sum itself, I was able to be more open-minded with all sorts of music. And through that, I was able to meet a lot of people who introduced, introduced me to new music <laughs> and like find different tribes within like finding new music. So, and they showed me like disc, like some, like some days on a Sunday, I listen to the more chilled music. So I like listening to a bit of disco, old school disco. I also like listening to like uh, UK Garage. I think every music has its own spectrum. One for the dance floors and one for a bit for home listening, and because I don't really go out myself anymore, I don't really go out out that much. I like to 
Yeah, I like to listen to more the home side, as much as I love the the big bangers, the big like the ones that raises the gun fingers up. That sort of music, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm more like and that's why related to the content I just put out, I just literally just uh, recently put out a Sunday Steppers uh, Steppers is like the two step sort of music in Garage Society, which is a piece of content that tailors more on the warm up the ones that you can dance in a lounge, having a cup of coffee. And, it's a, and I've got a dog myself, so I can dance with my dog with. Like, that sort of music I love. But at the same time, yeah, I listen to it, 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 literally different music. I listen to Chinese music as well. Like, this is the music I grew up with, my old school Chinese music, like Mandarin, Cantonese. Like, and I, the thing is, like, even I like listening to like melancholy music because I always, I always find myself very happy with me and I mean you're very happy you don't want to listen to sad music but I listen, like listening to sad music maybe sometimes to calm my mood mood down because my mind is so active all the time I remember I remember when as a kid my mum used to say why are you thinking about that like, like what, why, why can't you just be focused on like one thing or why can't you be focused on like that like one thing only and as a kid itself as a kid itself I always thought oh like you, you sort of disregard those thoughts, but then as I grew up, I think every, everything has a yin and a yang. The, 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 the more balanced side is that I was able to, when I was create something, your mind wants to be active all the time, but then when you want to be calmed down, like, it actually works at, at, at a disadvantage. So, yeah, it's just like my mind is so active, so I always like to listen to melancholy music too calm myself down yeah the, so, yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah the only reason i was saying that is because i literally no matter what mood i'm in i only have like one playlist <laughs> that i'm always oh, listening yeah, yeah, to yeah, yeah. and that kind of helps me kind of like you know no matter what i'm feeling go to that one spot whenever i'm listening to that music just that calm side of me yeah no, so that that's the only reason why i was asking <laughs> um so back to the point of material yeah. objects headphones links to the phone and i know in today's society where is we have so much negative stigma to always be on the phone all the time. And to me, I don't really like being on my phone all the time, like, especially, like... But with the nature of what I do with creating content, I do need the phone to sort of get the brand going uh, on a daily basis. So in some... I, I do need my phone, you get me? And, of course, I, I, I literally, I didn't have um, my phone the other day. I left it at home, literally left it at home. I was fine with it for a whole day. I actually loved it without my phone. But then when it came to, like telling my mum I was like safe from after work, it became more of a trouble. I was actually quite worried myself that I was, if, I, if something did like touch wood badly happen, I, was, I won't be able to tell someone. So I think a phone for a safety reason, also for content creation is very important. Um, I don't really, I don't, literally, as I say, I don't really, I don't really, of course the other two material items is clothes. I love, always like to wear like nice clothes, not nice clothes in the sense of designer, I like to create my own clothing. I like, I like to I always have to like always love wearing like well, well curated material clothes, and yeah, nice socks as well. Socks <laughs> is a very important thing. Like when I put a fresh <laughs> pair of socks in the morning, it's the best feeling ever. Would you say Dimson would branch out into your clothing as well? The thing is, I I love designing clothes. I think that's where I started my creative sort of. Um, venture. Yeah, venture. Um, actually, my when I it was in year twelve, I sat next to, next to my friend uh, Faris, who actually owns a uh, a music brand now as well. Actually, I'm wearing one of his t-shirts today. Plug it, plug it, whip it out. Ossia, which is Ossia. Oh wait, it's this one. Okay. So basically, Ossia was his brand. His parties in Manchester, but I knew Faris since secondary school, and literally we were doing math lessons with a teacher called Mr. Lane. And literally, I wasn't really mates with Faris before the mass, this mass class. And then one day I said, I want to create a clothing brand. And he, he did it with me. And then, of course, um, like I was love. I went to, I remember going, going to a clothes shop and I thought, I don't really like this. Like, and they said, why not just create something that you want to wear yourself and feel like really sick, like very good at it? You'd be like, something you drew yourself or do you design that thought process you put in yourself and then why don't you just wear it like you feel like that hence that's why I'm not the biggest fan of designer brands I like don't get me wrong I love people who love designer brands I have all this respect for them because it's a personal preference for them but at the same time 
I just love, I think that it doesn't beat the feeling of me like creating something, putting on a shirt, choosing the right t-shirt and then wearing it. I, I, I think that that feeling itself is very priceless. So actually with Dim Sum itself, I just had, I had free uh, Everpress, which is Everpress is a platform where I was able to sell t-shirts. And I, I had three different campaigns for Dim Sum itself, but uh, Everpress has been a very, very good platform for me to put clothes and also with time wise is perfect for me. Cool. So as we approach the end of the podcast, I just want to say how entertaining and how fun it has been for me to have to chat with you and getting to know you better. Thank you, man. You too. Yeah, no worries. It's, it's, it's a pleasure. Um, so yeah, before we wrap this up, I just want to ask you uh, one last question, which is because you have lived in Hong Kong as well as UK. Yeah, I and, lived in Hong Kong for one year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if you had the if you had to choose where you would live for the rest of your life, um, either Hong Kong or UK, where would that be and why? I think for family reasons, UK, because I I, 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 I just love UK so much. I don't know why, but it's just, it's, I think it's where all my memories are at with the closest people I have, my closest friends, my closest family. So I just love the UK sort of, a lot of creative things come out good from the UK, like music wise. And I just think it makes it really unique. I think London itself is such a diverse sort of area for music itself. And I just, I just love the fact that it is, if you get me. And in the UK, where I live, the neighborhood, I just love it all. But at the same time, you never know, no, you never know what happens in the future. I love to be able to live in some countries for like maybe a period of time, but mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day, I want to, of course, the UK is my home. And um, for me to call it a home, that's a place you want to be. The home is the best place in the world. So I would say UK, but I, I did enjoy my time in Hong Kong with the people I met as well, the experience I have, the people, literally just the food. It just it, it really shaped me up as, the, especially the human I am, like, especially these five years. It was a crucial time in, in, in my lifetime. So I, I, I would say UK, 100%. Cool. Oh, that's a really yeah. What, what are you? Do, 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 do. <laughs> I live in Hong Kong. Do you live in Hong Kong? <laughs> what are you? For Anne? me, uh, that's a. I actually don't know because I I need to go because I haven't been to Nepal for ten years now, right? Because I would need to go to Nepal and see how I feel because it's been so long. Yeah, and then I think. That would help me decide whether, like, to your question. But as of now, I don't know. Probably UK. Yeah, yeah. UK is home, isn't it? Like, what are you, Ang? UK as well? Um, I'd have to say UK. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I grew up here most of my life. And I don't think I'd quite fit in back in Nepal, to be honest. <laughs> actually, I, lo- I went to New York in the summer. I actually love New York. I, I, I probably didn't appreciate it when I, was in, um, in, um, when I was actually in New York itself, but... New York is such a beautiful place. I just really resonate with the lifestyle, the speed. The it just I just love I just love New York and always have memories of like good memories of New York. But and also, I was I went to New York with my family and my family of course means a lot. I mean that made it the whole experience um, awesome. With that being said, um, Lennox, it was really nice to um, talk to you. Thank you. Speak about the experiences that you had and, you know, share a little bit of our own. And thank you very much. And do you have anything that you want to say to the audience? Maybe just a little. Or like where, where they can find you. Um, so like, um, first, if it, I, I hope, I hope whatever I said today, like gave anyone value. But I would say, literally just embrace yourself as a person because, and there's so many obstacles in life, but if you embrace your strengths and your weaknesses at the same time, you will have a good time, you hear me? Like find, always in the mind of being an explorer in life, exploring different areas of life. And like just, 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 just put a smile on your face when you can, I think, and spread that energy, good energy across with different people. And yeah, uh, if you want to be interested in listening to some of the music I release or artwork, you can follow the Dim Sum account at Instagram at Dim Sum Records and SoundCloud at www.soundcloud.com Dim Sum Records. Yep. Uh, yeah, but spread out good energies, man. Gum fingers. <laughs> <laughs> With that being said, thank you very much for tuning in to Sal Candy and it's been another episode and hope to see you soon.
Peace. Peace.